Sorry, Andy. This mower's no good. You just be better off scrapping it. Oh, come on, Terrell. There ain't nothing you can do for this thing. No, it's not worth it. This thing is done. It's dead. It's junk. Just scrap it. Go get yourself a new one. This was the best mower I ever owned. No other mower cut as good as this one. This one cut so great. It was, it was the best, capiche? You know what you gotta do with this thing, Anthony? You need to take it over to Applebee's and have them hanging on a wall. That's about all it's good for. Now get it out of here. I got work to do. Applebee's? No, 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 no. I wasn't eating good in the neighborhood when I went there the last time, I'll tell you. I got the riblets. I was on the porcelain throne for a week. All right, I guess I'll go scrap it. Well, looks like that's the end of an era, little buddy. I know what you're thinking of doing. And I wouldn't advise it. Oh yeah, what's that? Going to Lowe's? Buying a new lawnmower? No. I'm taking it over to that mower graveyard and burying it. That doesn't make any sense. Why would I bury my mower at a junkyard? I'll just go to Lowe's and buy a new one. Oh, this isn't no regular mower graveyard. Whatever you bury there comes back to life. Oh, really? Even though the thing's junk? Even though it's junk. But what you bury out there doesn't come back the same. Local mechanics stopped using it years ago because the ground went sour. Huh. Interesting. Where's this place at? Because I'm not ready to give up on this old girl just yet. No! You mustn't go there. Even though it's just right across the street over there. You see that big tree? That's where everybody usually buries their stuff. But no, you mustn't do it. It's evil, okay? Don't go there. I'm begging you. This sounds like a crazy old rural legend, old man. I think I'm just gonna head down to the big box store and buy me a new one. Be done with it. Capiche? <sighs> well, I just got back from Lowe's. I didn't like what they had over there, that's for sure. Nothing but a bunch of plastic and battery crap for high dollar. Maybe I'll just take my chances and bury this one over at the Lawnmower Graveyard. Hopefully it comes back better than what they got at that Lowe's and Home Depot. Anthony, where are you going? Don't worry about where I'm going, Ma. I said I'm going out for a minute. ay 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 Pterodactyl here. Today's video is going to be on this here Taurus wheel horse with the Onan engine. And the problem with this tractor is it doesn't have any spark. So we're going to install a kit that the customer had bought off of Fleabay. But before we start the video, if you haven't already subscribed to this YouTube channel, then you need to subscribe so you can get the notifications when we got new videos and stuff coming up. So let's start the video. So this tractor came in and it's got no spark. In my experience with these Onan P engine, this is a P, it's got uh, electronic ignition on it and it has no spark. So I think if we get spark out of it, we could get it, we could get it to, to fire. And then I'm sure it's probably got a whole host of other issues to go with it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove this blower shroud. It's just a matter of just taking out a bunch of screws and pulling this cover off. I'm going to remove this also. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how come you're not testing anything? How come you're not testing the coil? How come you're not 
because my experience with these Onans over the years, I could just try to replace the coil. The coil might be bad. There's also these wires here go to a trigger module which is under the flywheel. That's why I'm going to pull the flywheel. And there's also a magnet. A ring that fits on the crankshaft that's got two magnets in it. So as it spins around, it goes by that, that uh, module, that trigger module, and that's when it tells it to spark. So we're not going to test all that. We're just going to put this kit in. My years of experience of doing these, you're just better off replacing all the ignition components and be done with it. So that's why I'm trying to get this cover off. And then it's also got a little condenser here. So here's the coil. And here's that trigger module. And I, I already put a battery to it and turned on the key. Because you got to have 12 volts to go to this ignition. And I did have 12 volts going to it. I guess I could hook it up and show you. A lot of people like these old Onans. They were, they're good engines back in the day. But they're getting harder and harder to get parts for. And the parts are expensive if you can find the OEM parts. And they're kind of difficult to work on. And when they get a lot of age on them, they start to develop problems. So let me tell you a little story. Want to hear a little story? Story time. I had a 318 with an Onan on it. Personal tractor. Brought it to the shop. Tuned it all up for the springtime. Was driving it out. Park it so I could take it home. And boom! Threw a rod. Full of oil. Just changed the oil and everything. Threw a rod. Great. Tear it down. Clean the crank. Put rods in it. Put pistons in it, it's expensive, costs a lot of money. Get it all back together, using it. Then it's got the governor is on the camshaft. It's got a camshaft and it's got this little plastic cage under a washer and there's ball bearings in there. And the bearings fly in and out and that's your governor. So now all of a sudden the thing's running fine. Now it starts racing, it's like surging. It's revving real high and then going down, and revving real high and going down. Pull it apart again. You know, this is like months later after I put the rods in it. And the little plastic cage under that big washer on the end of the camshaft was plastic. And over the years, you know, this thing is, at the time I was doing this, this tractor had to be over 30 years old. The plastic had deteriorated and it wasn't keeping the little balls where they needed to be that was under that plate. So they are all flying around in there. So then I had to buy a new camshaft. Well at that time it was still available. Bought a new camshaft in it, fixed that problem. Using it again, then the fuel pump went out. Then it quit charging. Had to put a regulator on it. Then there was one other thing that happened. Oh, one of the valve seats came out. So then I had to pull the head and stake the valve seat back in. So it just turned into a money pit. And by the time it was all said and done, now I'm doing all this work myself to save money. It still ended up costing me like $1,200 to do all this stuff. And I'm pulling that engine in and out. Oh, and then it lost spark too. It lost spark. Driving along and it lost spark. And the clutch came out of adjustment. Then I had to readjust the clutch. So it was just like one thing after another. So again, by the time it was all said and done, I had about $1,200 into it. I could have just bought a repower kit from Small Engine Warehouse and been money ahead and had a brand new engine, Vanguard, V-Twin Vanguard, and it would have been easy to get to the oil filter, easy to get to the starter, and I would have had a warranty with it from Briggs had I done all that. But I didn't know it was gonna snowball into this one thing after another. 
So that's my experience with Onins, and I've had other customers come in with similar problems. Another problem, the starter. Starter's very expensive. They make a knockoff starter. I don't know how good it is. Uh, I've had them come in where the starters had, had chewed up the ring gear on the flywheel. Then you got to find a flywheel if you can find one. You know, so I know some guys love these Onins. I'm sure they're very good engines back in the day, but the older they get, the more problems they have. So we're going to take a look at that kit that he brought in. So there's somebody on eBay that's selling these kits. I told him about the kit and he found it on Flea Bay. Now it's not OEM parts, but we've used a couple of these kits and they seem to work well and he sells, sells a lot of them. So there's the coil, comes with that new condenser, got the trigger module that goes under the flywheel, and here's that little ring I was telling you about, and there's magnets in here north and south. If you pop this thing apart, there's two little magnets in here. Now believe it or not, these magnets will go bad. And it'll drive you nuts. You'll have intermittent spark. We had a tractor that came in, would run all day. And then another time they would use it, it'd run two minutes and die. You check it, it's got no spark. You go out there an hour later, you hit the key, it starts up again, it's got spark. Intermittent, come and go. Like I said, sometimes it would run all day, sometimes it would run a few hours. And we went through the system, the ignition system, we did the test, where you test this thing and you turn the flywheel and you hook a meter to it and you see that, oh yeah, it's working, it's getting voltage. And then we put it all back together, hit the key, the thing would start up, go out there again another time, hit the key, crank and crank and crank and crank and wouldn't start, it's got no spark. And we're like, is this thing bad? Is this thing bad? Pulling that flywheel on and off, going through all this rigmarole, doing all these tests, testing the coil. Oh, it's got the ohms, it's got this, it's got that. And it was this. This was bad. Put a new one of these on. Didn't have a problem. So, it's just a lot easier, simpler to just buy this kit and just replace the whole ignition system and know that you got everything crushed. So that's what we're gonna do. All right. So on the positive side of the coil, we've got, this should be our main power coming in. Here's that little condenser. And here's the orange wire for the, uh, the little trigger module. And then the black wire is going to the negative side of the coil. So I'm going to get my test light to show you we got power going to, going to the coil. I'll hook that to ground. Put that on there. It's all rusty. And turn on the key. See, and we got juice. But when I cranked the thing over and put the spark tester on, we had no spark. So again, it might just be the coil, but we're gonna replace everything. So next I'm gonna disconnect this. And we're still gonna try to get this. Here's our voltage regulator. Still trying to get this. Uh, blower shroud off yeah I think I got to remove these screws down here so I'm gonna go ahead and just disconnect this coil and get this out of the way 
All right. Now this blower shroud should come off. Oh, I got more crap on here. All right, governor spring. I got to disconnect. It's been a while since I worked on one of these. I know when we installed those, I've installed several of those kits for customers over the years from Small Engine Warehouse. Really nice kit. Some of them even come with a new electric PTO clutch. It's all plug and play. And the customers always came back and they were very happy when we, uh, Got rid of that owning engine. Like I said, it was a lot easier to work on the engine, to get to the oil filter. Get to everything else. So we need to, need to get to this condenser here too. Of course, look at that 3.8 volt they got buried under there. So I'll have to get a wrench to loosen that. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm gonna take this flywheel off. I have to pull this bolt out of the middle of the flywheel here, it's five eighths. And I'll take all these washers off. And I'm gonna stick it back in there. And I'm gonna get me a pry bar and a hammer. So it's a 7 16 bolt. So I got a longer five inch long 7 16 coarse red bolt so it'll stick out so I got enough to hit it with the hammer and then I'll get my pry bar find a good spot to put some pressure on it and voila there's your dinner Otherwise, that other bolt's too short, and it's, you're going to have to try to hit inside the flywheel, and probably going to bugger it all up. So it's not too dirty in here. Magnets are on there, good. Here's your alternator, which is what charges your battery. So we need to remove this so we can get to that trigger module. And then here's that magnet. And chances are that may be what's wrong with it or it might be the coil. Pretty simple, it's got a notch in it for the keyway, it says flywheel side. And you just stick it in there. So we got that part done. Now I'll get me a Torx and we'll take that off. We'll remove that little trigger module. Just let that lay out of the way. Some crap in there. Being careful not to nick any of those. And it looks like 5 16 Holding this on.
run this out of the way. Take that off. There's the new one. There's a gasket under there. I'm gonna stick this in. And then stick the other wires in. Stick this in first for the oil pressure gauge. Then we'll stick this one in. Then our alternator, squeeze that up, push that back in there. We don't want the flywheel to hit on it. There's no setting or anything on this. Make sure we don't cross thread. We get a nut driver. I don't want to cross thread them because that'll make for a bad day. Put our alternator back on. Here's Mr. Stinkbug. Make sure this is getting a good ground. If this is corroded or rusted, want to make sure that's Gonna be getting a good ground. Our washers. Make sure that's good and tight. Now we'll hook up our coil. Oh, I gotta get that condenser off. Let me get a 3 8 wrench. So this bracket here is held on with this nut. I think it'll be easier. Sometimes they got this condenser mounted in a different spot. This is like a bad spot. Let's see if I loosen this. There we go. Now I can get at it. Get a ratchet wrench. Yeah. Sometimes the head of the ratchet wrench is too big and you can't get in and certain things. Now, if this was bad, that wouldn't keep it from sparking. This is more or less like a noise suppressor. And see, the hole for the screw is not big enough. So I'm gonna have to mount that. I'm gonna have to mount that somewhere else. I can leave that screw out of there. 
I just need to tighten this back up. I just snug it because this is where the blower shroud goes on. I may have to rock it back and forth. All right. Well, that's negative. Here's our positive. Now they got two different size studs on here. And the reason they do that is because they would put different size rings on there. So that way you couldn't mix them up. But this one looks like it had been bored out to fit this other coil. Oh yeah, look at this coil. I don't even know what this coil's off of. This isn't the right coil. This has got like a, a laminate on the bottom. So this may have been the whole problem, why it wasn't getting any spark, because somebody tried to cobble on a coil from something else. I don't know what this is off of. But anyway, that wouldn't be no fun, just putting a coil in. You want to see how this whole ignition system works. And again, if you're going to buy just a coil, you might as well just go ahead and spend the extra money and replace everything for peace of mind. That's what I would do. All right. So that's why they opened up all these terminals. So that's our power one. And then this is the other one. And this was one on the negative side. And I'm pretty sure that, yeah, this has got a small, see it won't fit on there. So that goes there on the positive side. Now there's supposed to be a bracket around here, but that's missing. And that helps to hold it into here. There's a bracket that's supposed to be with this. I might have one out in the junkyard. I'll go scrounge that up later. But let's just get spark out of it. Because that's what we're concentrating on. And then I'll tidy all that up later. Now this is a different size, so I got to get a different size, and then we got to secure that. This has got to be grounded. I got to find a, there's no little, there's no small holes anywhere. What I think I'll do is get one of these self drilling screws. Yeah, that fits through there. And I'll just drill a hole. And we'll just mount this up here. Probably mount it like this so you can get at it easier. But I'll drill it from this side. So I gotta get a 516 socket and do all that. All right, this nut is 930 seconds. We'll tighten that down. And then I got my self drilling screw. Cameraman's knocking all my stuff over.
This comes off. Stick it like that. Now I'll stick it in from that way. So it's a little easier to get at now. Kinda. That socket don't wanna. these out of the way. I'll have to use a wrench now. Just tightening that. So that was kind of tight. This clamp they got on here. He's going there. And this is going to be up here like this once I get it. And then our breather tube to our air box is going to go there. But that will get mounted. So I'm going to use the plug wires. Which uh, don't really fit in there too tight. So I'm going to have to spread this out. Get a screwdriver. Open that, open those up. And these don't look like the, uh, the Onan plug wires. These look like they've been replaced. The Onan, Onan ones have like a resistor built into them. All right. They're fitting in there tight now. Okay. Let's see where we can... Let me just support that in there for now, just so we could test it and see if we got spark. So let me get my spark tester and my jumper pack again and we'll crank it over and see if we got spark now. So these other components I took off might still be good. I'm not going to throw them away. That little trigger module and that little magnet ring. But again, they're used. You hate to sell them because you don't know how long they're going to last. sell them apart and it could last two years, it could last two minutes. Still got power to our coil. And let's see if we got spark. Spark now. Again, this tractor has been sitting a long time. The guy that bought it, Carol Fan, Daniel, and uh, he bought it for parts. 
because he's got another tractor just like it. But then he thought, well, if I can get it running, maybe I could use it. All right, so we got no governor spring hooked up because I disconnected all this. So that governor spring just hooks, you know, it just hooks to here. And then you're pulling on it and you're putting tension on it. So I'm just gonna hook it just temporary. I gotta find a spot. I don't wanna put too much tension on it. Maybe I could just hook it in here. We just don't want it to run run away on us. That ought to be good. And then uh I'll spray some dinosaur farts in there. Let's hook up this pulse line. I'm sure the carburetor is uh, all gummed up. I don't know if there's any gas in it. Take all this stuff off. Oh yeah, there's gas in it. Dinosaur juice. Where's the car, can of carb spray at? Gotta be some carb spray around here somewhere. This is the choke. That's the throttle. So the choke cable's hooked up. Alright, I gotta find a can of carb spray now. Dang, nabbit. Alright, let's give it a shot of some farts. Dinosaur farts. See if she'll lick off. Woo! It's pumping up the gas. Excited that I got spark out of it and find out I ain't got no dinosaur syrup in it. And they'll be throwing a rod. Oh, she's full. She is full. And it don't look bad. Kind of see through it a little. All right. Well, Daniel, that small investment. And the ignition system paid off. Let's try to start it again. ignition systems if you're working on one of these or you're having trouble with one with no spark and you're replacing the coil and you still got no spark and you don't know where else to go replace it all that kit's not that bad I don't like to buy a lot of aftermarket parts if I don't have to but sometimes your hands are tied you know it's your only choice or you're gonna spend a ton of money for OEM or you might spend a lot of money for used 
And again, it's used. You don't know how much time it's got on it. You know, you're rolling the dice. Maybe you're a gambler. Maybe you're like Kenny Rogers, the gambler. And you like to gamble. You're like, I'm going to buy that parts. Them used parts online. Come on! Trigger module! Yeah! Woo! Oh, it's no good. The guy sent it to me and it's bad. So, yeah. It's not a bad kit. You can find it on Fleabay. There's a guy selling them. Uh, I know for a while there he didn't have any. And he must have got them back again. But I think it's a decent kit. He sold quite a few of them. It looks like, you know, I don't know where he's getting them made and getting these magnets and stuff, but just in case you might have one of these and, and you replace the coil, you replace that little condenser and you replace this and you still got no spark, chances are it's this. This ring, because I know. I had a problem with mine. That John Deere. Take it apart, putting it together, and on a John Deere, you got drive shaft. So every time you want to work on the ignition, you got to pull the whole engine out because you got to get the blower shroud off. And you know, the drive shaft's hooked to here. This engine's pretty easy to do because you know you can just pull the cover off. Like I said, these aren't bad engines, they're good. They're strong, they sound nice. It's just when they get a lot of time on them, just beware that these things pop up. And if you're a mechanic or, or a handy guy, you know, I just showed you all, or showed you, I just told you, I didn't show you, I told you all the problems I had that may help with you. It's like I said, I was working on mine a lot, but again, I know how to do all this stuff. Had I had to take mine in to get it repaired, you know, that would have cost me thousands of dollars because I would have had to keep turning around and, hey, now my clutch keeps kicking out. I mow for about an hour and the clutch kicks out. All I had to do was adjust it to get the clutch to, to grab again, but it's aggravating. You know, you're trying to get work done. You're trying to get that grass mowed and you're about halfway done and all of a sudden, Burr! Man, what's wrong with this thing now? Oh, it's the fuel pump. It ain't getting any gas. It's not pumping any fuel. Now I gotta get a fuel pump. Oh man, now the battery's dead. Oh man. I mowed about most of the lawn and killed the battery. And I had to jump it, get it started again, and finish the lawn, and now it's killing the battery all the time because I had a bad voltage regulator. Or oh man, this thing's running on one cylinder. What the heck's wrong with it? The valve seat came out. Oh man, this thing threw a rod. Oh man, oh man, there's just all man and all the time. So I hope this video helped. Troubleshooting your own ends. Pretty simple, basic. It's a monster. It's a big motor. It's heavy. They sound cool. It'd be cool to put one of these like on a mini bike. <laughs> yeah, right. Ride no mini bike with that thing on there. So, you like this video? Again, if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. Follow me with your own ends on Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store. Got all kinds of stuff. Maybe you want to buy some stuff. Maybe you like this cool shirt or this spark plug necklace or this hat. Go to our store. Check it out. We got our stuff too. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! So now I gotta put that blower shroud and all that stuff back in. All right, I got my work cut off for me. Stay tuned and see what happens at the end of the skid. Ooh, scatty, scatty, it's scatty time. That doesn't make any sense. Why would I bury my mow at a junkyard? All right, that ought to do it. Not like this the first hole I dug. Whew, I'm getting too old for this, that's for sure. All right, let's hope for the best.
like a mower out here. But I don't see anything. Oh, wow. 